Well, I don't know whether you're going to find this um, uh, a challenge uh, or an encouragement or even a rebuke, but we'll see. I want to say a few words on a, the end of a verse in 1 Peter. 1 Peter chapter 1, you needn't look it up, you'll know it anyway. Well, I think you'll know it. 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 12. And this is how Peter finishes that verse. He says, I think in the authorized it says, uh, the angels desire to look into these things or something like that. Uh, my, my Bible says, even the angels uh, long to look into these things. But it's the same thing. The angels long or desire to look into these things. Now, what things is he talking about? Well, if you read the chapter, you'll see very simply from verse 10, I think, but you can go back before that, he's speaking about the Old Testament, the Old Covenant particularly, and he's speaking about the Law and the Prophets, particularly the Prophets, and he's saying they all spoke of the Lord Jesus Christ. They were all speaking of Christ, from Genesis right up to Malachi. But they were speaking in shadows and pictures and prophecies and types and illustrations. But the prophets knew that they were speaking about something glorious that was coming. The promised Messiah, the King, the Redeemer. But these prophets were spiritual men, of course, and they scratched their heads. Hmm. Now, I wonder when this is going to be. I wonder what it will be like, really. For example, you get in the book of Zechariah, a fountain will be opened for sin and uncleanness. I'm sure that Zechariah thought about that. I wonder what that really means. Now, Isaiah 53. Now, you all know Isaiah 53. But I can imagine Isaiah when he prophesied that, when he preached it, when he read it, when he wrote it down and so on, after he read it, after he'd written it down. I'm sure he thought about that. A lamb led to the slaughter, laid on him the iniquity of us all, bruised, despised. For, oh, I wonder what this means and what this is about. Well, this is what Peter says. The prophets knew they were speaking about something beyond their own time, hundreds of years after them, but they were curious, they were interested. And then he says this, and even the angels desire to look into such things. Even the angels long. Now this is remarkable. Because you see, the angels can have no personal interest in what these men are speaking about. The coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, his dying on the cross, his living a perfect life, his death, his burial, his resurrection, his ascension, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, living for us now, interceding for us, coming again. The angels can have no interest in that. You see, if angels sinned, what happened to them? Cast out, straight away into chains. There is no salvation. Angels, if they sin, are locked up in chains straight away. There is no redemption for them. And if you look at the book of Revelation, you see their songs, uh, the songs of angels and others, you'll find that the angels sing praises to God and to Christ, but they never speak about he redeemed us by his blood, because he never did. But of course, the saints can rejoice in the redeeming blood of Christ. But Peter says, even though they have no interest themselves, personally, even the angels long to look into these things. Now, look. Now, do you know what a thesaurus is? A thesaurus is a book where you look up the word look and you can find some other meanings to the word look, some other words which go like with it. I'll give you one. How about glimpse? Can you think of any others? See, how about that? Anybody got any else? Go on, call out. Peer. Peer, there you are. Or peep. Or peek. Glance, notice, 
regard, observe, yeah. survey, view, watch, and goes on and on and on. The word look is like other words. They are so rich you can get different meanings to them. Yeah. Obviously a glimpse is not the same as a stare, and a glare is not the same as looking. Now, it's the same in Greek. Now, Paul, uh, Peter wrote in Greek, and the word he used here is made up of two Greek words. And the first one means aside, on, alongside, aside. And the other one means to stoop forward. This word, paracupto, is used in the Gospels when the disciples got to the empty tomb. Do you know what they do? They bent down and looked inside. They craned their necks, you see. Really curious. What's going on in there? Eh? You get it in the book of James too. We are to look into the perfect law of liberty. Not glance. No. Not take a quick look. Not a peep. No. But bend our necks. Mm -hmm. And have a good old look. Now Peter says that the angels crane their necks. There they are. I wonder what this is about. They're really interested in the gospel and in Christ. I read in my Bible, and you read in yours, that the angels rejoice over sinners that repent. Yes. We know that the angels come to our meetings. Did you know that? The angels are present at our meeting. Yeah. They're observing what's going on. Yeah. Oh yes. And they rejoice over repentant sinners. I also read in the book of Hebrews, something very mysterious, but they are ministers for those who are the heirs of salvation. They look after us in some way. Now, I don't know the answer to all these things, but the angels are really interested. Good. They've got the crane in their necks. You can hear them talking. I wonder what that's about. I wonder what's going on there. I'd like to know more about that. And yet they have no personal interest in it. Isn't that remarkable? Now, I'll tell you something even more remarkable. I've done a fair bit of preaching or talking in my time, and I've addressed a fair number of unbelievers. And you know, most of them, although their eternity depends on what I'm talking about, they couldn't care less. Now, if anybody here is like that, that's a rebuke to you. If anybody's listening to this on this recording, don't you realize that your everlasting salvation, your eternal damnation, or your eternal bliss, happiness, depends on this gospel upon this Lord Jesus. And you are interested in it. You want to know what the weather's going to be like. You want to know what this holiday's like you're going on. You want to know what's for dinner and all the rest of it. And you don't want to know about the eternity and about Christ. Shame on you. Shame on you. But I speak to myself as a believer. Do you know, a very sad thing to me is, especially young men, but not only young men, is that they seem to be so lacking in curiosity about spiritual things. Justification, well, I don't bother my head about that. Imputed righteousness, well, Romans 5, I'm not gonna, oh, I don't go into all those, don't you? The angels do. The angels do. So if you're not curious, my friend, as a believer, I do want to rebuke you. I want to challenge you. If you find yourself really curious about these spiritual things, I think that is a great mark. You may say, well, that's for young people. I have a friend whose father is now dead. If I mentioned his name, we'd all say, I know him. He's a local man. You knew him all right. This man, towards the end of his life, was virtually bedridden. But when my friend would go to see him, there he would be lying in his bed, and his bed was littered with papers and books, and he was writing. And what was he writing on? And what was he looking at? The Bible. Oh, but he was 90-odd. He couldn't get out. He, could, he was still curious about the things of God. He wanted to know. He was craning his neck, you see. He was looking. My friend, is the, are the angels challenging you this morning? They challenge me. Don't just peep into the Bible. Look into it. Don't be satisfied with a little knowledge. Know as much as you can, not only about Christ, but knowing Christ. The angels rebuke us, my friend. 
we have a real interest in these things. I hope we're really curious about the things of Christ. 1 Peter 1.12 then, even the angels long to look into these things, and I hope we do too. Amen.